So, uh, what are you dating like an accountant now? Or Owen. Ventriloquist? Stop it. You love a dummy. This is not why we're here. You can blame me. Try to shame me. I know why we're here. A rescue op. Save the dinosaurs from the island that's about to explode. What could go wrong? Blue is alive. You raised her. Do these animals deserve the same protections given to other species? Or should they just be left to die? These creatures were here before us. And if we're not careful, they're going to be here after. Life cannot be contained. Life breaks free. Life finds a way. Hello, and welcome to this special trailer reaction edition of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Beyer, and we are here to discuss all new trailer for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We thought we'd do something a little bit different today, since we're all so excited we put together a panel that we're calling the InGen Boardroom. Ooh. Hopefully the panel format will help us focus our excitement and let everybody have a chance to get their thoughts heard. I'll be acting as the InGen Boardroom moderator, but before we begin, let me introduce you to our uh, board members. Uh, first, we've got Brad Jost, host of the Jurassic Park podcast. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good, Brad. Uh, we've got Victoria from Victoria's Cantina. Hello, everyone. And we've got Chris from Criss Cross Media. Hey, how's it going, guys? Pretty good. We just got that uh, crazy trailer. Everyone online is pretty excited, and uh, it thought it would be cool to uh, get some of your guys' thoughts on it. So uh, without further ado, uh, what are you guys' first impressions? Uh, Chris, you want to take it? Um, mind blown. I, I, I think we're, I was saying on Twitter earlier that they showed a lot. Um, but one thing that makes me happy is that I also saw on Twitter that in this trailer, only the first half or first half hour, uh, was actually shown. So there's a lot of this movie that has yet to be explored, um, for the audience. So that gets me excited. I feel like there's a lot that we have yet to see, um, but initial thoughts, I mean, there's so, so much to take in. I don't think, um, I'm, I'm already more hyped for this film than I was Jurassic World. Um, so going into this, I have, like, my mind is just, like, exploding with excitement. Um, yeah, what, what, what do you guys think? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so let's do, so let's say this. So you brought up two good, t uh, points. Um, Brad, like first, what are your impressions? And do you think they've shown too much up to this point? Or do you think it's not enough? Like where, how do you feel? Oh man, I think they've shown way too much with all the different, uh, you know, teasers. We saw like, what, like three or four teasers and a behind the scenes reel, which was really long. Yeah. And this trailer, I think we've definitely seen too much. Um, they could have cut it down a lot. But I do love the enthusiasm of Universal. I've, I've honestly never seen a more hyped trailer 
ever. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have. I mean, honestly, I you know, there's a lot of hype around Star Wars trailers and stuff like that, but the amount of effort that the company is putting into it, I don't I almost think I've never seen that because Universal had like the logo on buildings all around the world like that was out of control it's just this thing was everywhere i heard it on the radio it's been on the tv like all this stuff is ready to go and uh i i was blown away by this trailer even after seeing all that stuff i mean there was a lot of repeat stuff and kind of situations that we may have seen before but the situations that happened in this trailer I, my draw my jaw dropped I, I filmed like a reaction video to it. It's on YouTube and I was just like near tears at the end. Like this is horrifying. It's incredible. And it's just, it's going to be the best and the worst all at the same time. I think. Yeah. It's uh, there's, there was definitely a lot of hype this week. It was almost like a, a Jurassic week uh, for the fans. Now jumping off another thing that Chris said, Victoria, are you, does this get you more hyped for this movie than you were for the original Jurassic world when that released a few years ago? Uh, yeah, I would say that I agree with that. Um, and, and that's kind of a little weird to say because, uh, you know, going into Jurassic World, that was the first Jurassic film in a, a very long time, well over a decade. And, um, I mean, I was immensely excited for that. But uh, I, I guess I didn't really expect that Jurassic World was going to be as successful as it was and that, you know, so many people were going to actually love it. So I kind of feel like, there was a lot for me like going into how excited I was to see this trailer and uh, especially with everything that's been going on with it, all the little clips and tidbits that have been popping up for the last couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I, the hype has just been absolutely crazy. And I, I think that overall, uh, yeah, it, it's really gotten me extremely excited. And now that I've seen the trailer, uh, perhaps even more. Yeah. I think you bring up a good you know, point is that, Jurassic World was kind of like an underdog. It's, you know, it's year. They knew they'd get the fans and they knew that they would get like the, um, you know, kind of the hype. But it was the number one movie of all time up until later that year when The Force Awakens came out. And I don't think anybody expected uh, Jurassic World to even no. compete with The Force Awakens, let alone be second that year, uh, you know, to it. Um, you know, so maybe this time they're kind of taking you know, a little bit of, of notes from Disney where it's like, yeah, like let's show them a ton of stuff uh, early on. I personally kind of hope this is all we get um, up until TV spots and stuff. Uh, but, you know, that's that's just my personal opinion. Um, we had a lot of new things in this trailer. Um, Brad, what was like your favorite moment from this new trailer? Um, well, I've been, I, I don't know. It's hard to say just one, man. Um, I think, uh, but I do think the Carnotaurus scene and the T-Rex moment, like, that blew my mind. Like, first off, I did not expect to see that Carnotaurus there, like, come around the gyrosphere ball and, like, almost attack them as they're sitting there. And then the T-Rex just, you know, pulled an Indominus Rex and just, like, ripped at the thing's neck and just destroyed it. And I, I was like... I was blown away and just so cinematic, like the way that the the camera was looking at that Rex, it's got that roar that we're so used to, you know, like seeing that pose and all that, that was very familiar, but against that backdrop of like chaos and just destruction, um, I was just like, I didn't know how to comprehend it really. Uh, yeah, one of the things I loved about the Carnotaur was, and I, I wrote uh, Jay Jurassic as soon as I saw it. I wrote him, and I was like, "It's black and red, just like the Kenner toys." And like he wrote back, he's like, "I know." Um, yeah, so I'm really excited that you know that's something that I've been I've been wanting to see is very like Kenner inspired uh, stuff in the franchise, and it looks like we might get that, especially in the Carnotaur. Uh, Victoria, what was your favorite part? You know, there's actually two parts that I'm split between, and the first one is also the Carnotaurus. But uh, I was also really taken with the uh, emergence of the Brachiosaurus uh, in front of the uh, visitor center. I thought that was it was unexpected. I didn't really think we were going to see that species again, uh, especially because we didn't see it in Jurassic World. But the fact that it was there really got to me. I really loved seeing that. Yeah, we had made mention on a Game Trail episode that, that Jurassic World Evolution has the Brachiosaur back, and and we were all pretty excited for that. I think even, uh, you know, Brad had made mention that he hopes he sees the Brachiosaur again. Um, so to see that back, I think is really cool. I'm excited for I'm excited for that species to be back. Um, Chris, what about you? 
So, I mean, of course, everything that you guys have mentioned already, um, there's so many little pieces to take from the trailer that are great, but the two that really stuck out to me um, was, one, the return of Jeff Goldblum. Um, I'm going into it knowing that it's going to be a cameo uh, rather than like a, a supporting character or a role, but just to see him and the, and, and just the, I, I can understand that his his role in the movie is going to be very important, and that's what gets me exciting, uh, very excited. Um, what he has to do in that courtroom um, is really going to play through throughout the film. Um, but the second thing is I really just love the reveal of the animatronic Rex. Um, I know that was teased earlier this week, but every time I see it, I just um, I can't believe we're getting a, a new animatronic T-Rex. And I've been waiting since Jurassic Park 3 to see, you know, how because in each movie the Rex animatronic evolves in, in in many different ways, and I was just really excited to see how it would look in Jurassic Park Four, and we never got it, and to finally get it now, it to me as a fan it just means a lot. So that to me is my favorite moment in the entire trailer, and might end up being uh, for the entire movie when it comes out. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, we did get that behind the scenes uh, look this week, and it does look like there's definitely more animatronics in this film uh, than the previous. Um, you know, I think that's really exciting for fans. Um, I'm I'm kind of a proponent of, you know, do whatever works. Um, and I think the motion in Jurassic World, the first one, there wasn't too many shots that really uh, would have been good for like a CG or I'm sorry for an animatronic animal but um, the animatronics that we've seen I know fans have been clamoring for it so I'm excited that you know that we're all going to get that uh, you know you were talking about like comparing it to older movies um, we definitely get like a a very big Lost World vibe yes um, do you guys think this was the right choice uh, Victoria I'll let you start off with that one. Oh yeah absolutely uh, I, I'm really glad to see that not only are they separating it quite a bit, it seems, from what we got in Jurassic World, but that they are also kind of anchoring it a little bit more to the Lost World, uh, especially seeing, you know, all the capture gear and uh, the trailers with the equipment. Uh, I mean, we saw teasers and little bits of that early on, and, you know, stuff has leaked over the last uh, several months. But just seeing it brought all together in the trailer... Uh, it definitely did have a very The Lost World vibe. That made me especially happy because, I mean, who doesn't love The Lost World? And, uh, yeah, I definitely feel that. And uh, especially having uh, Dr. Malcolm in there, that kind of helped, I guess, uh, help me have that feeling. But, um, yeah, definitely a much more Lost World vibe, a little bit darker. Uh, the tone definitely seems to be a little bit, um, a little bit more serious overall, at least from the trailer. So that's really exciting to me. Well, so you bring up a, a really interesting point, you know, who doesn't love The Lost World? And as a huge fan, I, I love The Lost World. Um, I will always defend that movie to the day I die. But I would actually argue that general audiences don't necessarily love The Lost World. Um, whenever you hear people talk about comparing the movies, everyone's like, oh, the first one's the only good one. Um, the Lost World was terrible because of gymnastics and going to San Diego and all this other stuff. Chris, do you think this is the right decision to to maybe parallel to the Lost World? Do you think maybe they should have done something different, or do you think they will be able to tell that Lost World story maybe a little bit better? Well, here's the thing: I think Lost World has aged better, and I think there's a lot more appreciation for that film than it was uh, when it originally came out in '97 because it was coming out. It was the predecessor predecessor to Jurassic Park. So how do you like it's to live up to that hype is is impossible. So. I think over time people have appreciated that film more, especially after Jurassic Park 3. Um, but uh, I think this is the right way to go because one, it's not a remake. Um, two, I think people wanted a grittier, darker story. And I, that's what I wanted for a Jurassic Park 4 um, as a follow-up to Jurassic Park 3. I wanted something um, gritty and just and, and dark. And that's exactly what the Lost World was. It, it, it took what Jurassic Park park was and just flipped it on its head and they're very different movies and what's cool is that you we are seeing that echo with jurassic world to fallen kingdom um so i do think it was a good move and as a big fan of the lost world i'm very very excited that they're doing this that's really cool brad you got anything like like what are your thoughts on the whole lost world parallels 
Uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I hope it parallels a lot. Um, the Lost World is one of my favorites. It's probably the set my second favorite of the entire thing. Um, so I'm I'm welcoming it all. And I think what you were talking about before with the gymnastics and all this stuff. I think those are the things that people pick out, not necessarily the tone. And the tone w- it seems to be a lot of what, what we uh, can can. Uh, compare here and maybe also the the you know getting dinosaurs off the island all that kind of stuff for sure so it makes me wonder like if people are going to complain because at the end of the day once we all see these this movie um the same thing happened with the force awakens a lot of people said oh it's just a rip off of the uh, of a new hope it's the same thing and i still hear people say that however many years later what is it uh, two years later three years later or almost uh, two i guess well we're um, seeing that right now as we lead up to the last jedi yeah, right everyone's saying, saying oh empire. they're just gonna rip off the the empire strikes back so does this fall into that category to you not for me, no, because I think there's so much else going on around that scenario. Like, if they're taking dinosaurs off the island, it's for a different reason. But, yeah, people are, are, are finicky, and they'll compare that, you know, and just say, like, oh, it's so similar that there's taking dinosaurs off that it's the same movie, which is just false. It's just the same way that A New Hope is not the same as The, uh, the Force Awakens. They're just not the same. There's some similar aspects, but they're not the same. So much else around the movie. There was no volcano exploding in The Lost World. There was no, uh, there's so many different dinosaurs in this movie and so many different situations I think that we're going to deal with that make them, you know, far different. Very cool. So, you know, the great thing about Jurassic Park movies is that with every movie, we get some new dinosaurs to uh, get excited about. Uh, you guys brought up the Carnotaurus. Um, we see uh, what Colin has confirmed is a Baryonyx uh, in some kind of uh, maintenance shed or something like that. And then there is an, I'm going to call it right now, an unnamed carnivore. I don't know what it is. I don't think anybody has really uh, figured out what it is, but it's in the uh, valley um with the gyrospheres what what are your guys' excitement levels for these new dinosaurs and are there any other ones that you guys uh hope to see um brad i'll start with you oh i'm not it's weird to say but i'm not like the like the dinosaur crazed guy on the podcast like i don't necessarily go nuts for certain types i love all the ones that we see i, I love a brachiosaurus is my favorite so i'm you know really glad to see that again and I think we were talking about this before we started, but like I, I, I was saying about the Carnotaurus, I'm like, ah, whatever, you know, it'll be cool if that shows up. And it, here it showed up and my mind was blown. Like, so I just didn't expect that type of reaction. And I'm like, wow, I, I didn't I didn't know I would feel that way about it. It's amazing. As far as that one that we see in, in the Gyrosphere Valley also, um, there's, there's two, I, I wasn't sure. There looked like there was maybe two different ones that I, I didn't know, or it could have been the same one. One of them was a really quick, like, running and bumping into another dinosaur. And I think the other one was, like, I don't remember. It might have been near the gyrosphere or something. But, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, Suchomimus maybe it could be or I don't know. I have no idea. It just, to me, it looked, like, too green. It looks like they didn't finish the coloring on it or something. But um, I that doesn't, whatever it is is cool with me. I don't really care too, too much. Fair enough. Uh the graphics a lot though i mean to judge the the, the effects oh, no, no. right now is too, way too premature yeah i'm not like, judging I it i'm source, like it's fine like, that went through like six iterations before it came out and i i'm curious to see the evolution of what we saw today to like a trailer that comes out like a month before the film it's gonna be really interesting well you know i can speak to that too because i remember when we saw the first jurassic world trailer um and the gallimimuses were running yeah. through that valley their their run cycles were very um mechanical feeling and i remember i remember watching that first trailer going oh no like they messed up like an homage and like if you mess up an an homage like you've ruined like all credibility right um i I recently saw uh an episode of supergirl where they tried doing the uh superman returns 360 and it was like because they're a tv show they don't have the budget to fully realize that and so like my whole the whole thing was like kind of like ruined for me right because i was like man if you're gonna do it like you have to do it better, right? Than than the last thing, or or you have to do it, um, you know, differently. If you're just trying to hit the same thing with the lesser VFX, it, it doesn't fall through. So, or it doesn't it doesn't pull through. Uh, so yeah, I think I think VFX will get polished up. Um, 
you know, Victoria, I know you know your dinosaurs pretty well. Do you have any idea what that un- unknown carn- uh, carnivore might be? Uh, not really too sure. Uh, Zucomimus is as good a guess as I would probably come up with. Uh, what was interesting, though, and I didn't notice this myself in the trailer, but did you guys notice there was a new uh, Ceratopsian, maybe like a Pachyrhinosaurus or a mm-hmm. Styracosaurus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it fell in the water, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I just noticed it. Um, someone had posted it on a on a Twitter feed, but that's the only thing I saw. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let's see. So we get a little bit. This all started uh, this last week with um, getting a little bit of of uh, baby raptor um, footage, and everyone was like, "Oh, is this? Is it Blue's baby? Is it Baby Blue? Um, where are you guys falling on this now that we've seen this trailer?" Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. It's definitely Blue. Um, I think it's a callback. I think they're going to have some sort of a flashback. I don't know if they're going to just have it like a literal flashback or he's going to be like, look through a phone or something like that or footage. Um, but I think that's definitely blue. I hope we get to see Delta echo and, uh, Charlie, right? It was yeah. Charlie, right? Well, some of them are, are they dead at this? Are a couple of them dead at this point I'm from Jurassic saying, world? Uh, I'm saying the footage. Oh, okay. I get what you're flashback, saying. Flashback. I'm assuming it's a flashback. I hope we get to see all of them and they're they're interacting and, and, and everything. I think that'd be really cool. Um, and to harken back to that um, concept art where all the little raptors or the hashlings are playing uh, together. But yeah, I think that's... I w- it would be cool if it was Blue's offspring. I know there's there's so many theories going around and people were like dissecting how the, the line art is on... The raptor's body and if it matches blue or not but i think it's pretty safe to say that that's baby blue uh victoria what do you think i think it's baby blue it, it kind of seems like that's what they were alluding to and what's interesting though is that it looks like it's in the old visitor center so i think that kind of throws people off a little bit but i don't think it's too unreasonable to assume that uh i mean obviously those locations were still there in jurassic world so i don't think it's too far of a stretch uh, to imagine that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they had the babies in different parts of the island for whatever purposes they may have had. Maybe they were raising them contained somehow uh, originally in the visitor center. So it just seems like it's old footage, but, but it's pretty cool that they're going to have flashbacks. I, it makes me wonder what else they're going to have as far as flashbacks go. Okay, so that kind of, you know, maybe leads into another question wh- that I have maybe for Brad. Um, so if if we are to assume that this is baby blue... Um, that means we're getting kind of a little bit maybe of a backstory or something. Mm-hmm. Is is Blue's backstory something that is important to you as like a Jurassic Park fan? Or do you – do are you in the – do you like having hero and villain dinosaurs? W- where do you fall on that, Brad? Well, I think I think we can pretty much clear it up because it, it's got to definitely be Blue based off the, the teasers and stuff. They, they said like Blue and they showed this baby and they said like – you know, do you, you raised her and time? all this other stuff? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's definitely blue. And to me, this is definitely like a nursery of sorts. I mean, look at the ground. It's like, it looks like almost like gym mats or something like that. You see like, like a play equipment, like you would see in like a big tiger exhibit of some sort. Um, you see all kinds of stuff and he's obviously training and, and, uh, the background, I, you know, I was, I'll, I'll say, I admit I was 100% wrong in my, um, you know, uh, reaction to this initially when we saw that much smaller clip, it wasn't as wide as the shot in this trailer. Um, it was very small and contained and you didn't really know what was going on, but, and analyzing that, like there was so much going on and you're like, it's definitely a flashback or it's, you know, or it could be blues baby and it's in the old visitor center and he's wearing his fallen kingdom outfit or something. So you're like, there was so much to go on and I was 100% wrong. So, you know, this, it must just be, um, artwork to replicate that as far as uh your question um do i need to see blue's backstory or or anything like that i i would have said no but once i saw this baby raptor i'm like i need i need to see everything like i need all of it because i mean what i want to see is like the building of jurassic world you know like from jurassic park to jurassic world that's the that's that's a movie i really want to see well yeah yeah i i've always said i kind of want like the netflix series you know just showing how they started but like yeah i i never knew i wanted like this baby version or or this backstory but i do and i'm also horrified at the same time because i feel like the only time you ever show something like this is for a dramatic effect later on if you're going to show this sad backstory you know this cute backstory actually 
it's going to be sad later on when something bad happens. And that's just my assumption. But And I was completely wrong with what this situation was before. So I'm hoping I'm wrong again. But uh, it could be used for that effect. I don't know. So, you know, Colin has, has come out and said things like, um, you know, we've done a lot of movies running around the island. And uh, in the behind the scenes, uh, Chris Pratt was like, oh, we're – blowing the island up where do you guys see where do you guys hope to see this movie go um chris i'll start with you on that one um well i know way before we knew anything about fallen kingdom colin talked about the relationship we have with dinosaurs and mankind um and it's very interesting because they said that this movie was anchored on that uh quote from alan grant uh, whereas the marketing is really anchored on the quote from malcolm with life finds a way. Um, I really want to see, I want to see more interaction, uh, with, with dinosaurs on the mainland and not, not just having, you know, a T-Rex rampage through San Diego, which again, I love that scene, but I want to see more of, you know, I think they talked about using these creatures in like farming and like they become almost like domesticated, um, to an extent, and I kind of want to see like that process. So I, I want to see them br- brought to the mainland, and I'm really curious as to what's going to happen because I know we, there's. You know, I, I think it's safe to say we all know about the manor, the that's the Lockwood Manor that's shown and the behind the scenes stuff. And I'm I'm curious like what happens at that point, and then after that, where is this going to be explored in the third one, which I think we can all assume will uh, inevitably happen. Um, it's just very interesting. I wasn't expecting, I will say this, this Jurassic world, this plot, this is not what I was expecting entirely. I think I thought I was going to go in a little bit of a different direction, but I'm happy. This is the the story that they're choosing to, to, uh, to tell us. So that's a good point. Where did, where were you, what were you expecting this movie to be? And how does this trailer like disprove what you thought? Um, that's, that's the thing. Cause like, Based on what Colin was saying, I forget what podcast he was on, but he was he was giving an interview, and they were talking a lot about the relationship with um, mankind and the animals. And I guess I assumed that we would be told a story that was maybe like five or ten years after the events of Jurassic World, and them just like uh, dismantling the park and then I guess tra- I, I guess it's very similar to to what we're getting but it, it's, it's also like the the reason behind it with the volcano to save their lives and to bring them to a manor is different um, I thought there were the only reason to bring them over was um, oh okay I know exactly I, I thought we we're gonna get a little bit more of the outsourcing the the, the dino DNA like Biosyn coming in and how they they talked about how um, with InGen and Masrani Corp uh, filing for Chapter 11 um, that other companies would be able to now clone dinosaurs. And I thought that was the plot for this film. Maybe it is. Maybe it's going to be teased. Um, and I thought the whole Wu storyline would be swept in there as well. Um, but from this trailer and the marking that we've seen so far, it doesn't seem like any of those things are really touched upon, which I find very interesting. Yeah, Victoria, did you have kind of like this the same like the same uh, reactions? Does this fit what you thought this movie was going to be? Um, well, coming out from Jurassic World, I really expected a lot of the same thing: more of the outsourcing, more of the militarization of the dinosaurs. Um, I, I thought it was definitely going to go in that direction. We we're going to see more of that, and uh, if not that, I thought we were going to see maybe more companies kind of being strategic with how they were utilizing this technology. And uh, maybe competing against one another. And um, now that um, InGen or whoever was in charge at this point, Mizrani, of uh, you know creating these dinosaurs after what happened, uh, I kind of imagined that somebody was going to have to buy them out and you know take over that technology, something along those lines. Um, so initially, I didn't expect this at all. The way that it seems to be going, um, the trailer didn't surprise me at all. I mean, I had been hearing a lot of things for a while now about the direction they were going in, mostly through. Uh, tidbits i'd be getting about toys and things like that um but uh yeah i mean initially i did expect it to be a lot different than what it ultimately seems like it's going to be dealing with okay brad does it does it fit what you thought it was going to be or are we like are you still way out of the you know left field 
Um, no, I think it's uh, perfectly in line. I I keep telling everybody like the second that Jurassic World ended, I like grabbed some screenshots and and made my own images. I put vines all over everything. I made it like you know like a par- a place that's falling apart and hasn't been touched in years. So we saw that aspect. I. <laughs> Uh, I I wrote I was you know we do an audio play an audio drama and Arjun Boss is like the guy behind it he makes this whole thing before he came out with his I was gonna do my own about a rescue mission to go get Blue and the Rex and other dinosaurs because a volcano was gonna go off so really that, yeah no no joke like 100 percent that was my thing I scripted like I I wrote out the outline and started writing it. And then I got, I fell behind. I never produced the audio drama. Arjun came to me with his, so I'm like, let's just do this one. And his is awesome, by the way, if, if nobody's listened to it yet. But um, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. And it, it like, it's depressing in a way because it's like, I, this is my idea in a way, but like, amazing to kind of see this like come to light. It's so cool. You know, in a way, and I had this argument with uh, Jurassic World. Jurassic World was the realization of my childhood um you know fantasies playing with the original toys uh you know as far as like the chaos effect um you know and and rebuilding the park i always loved the park more than i loved um you know i I love the lost world but at the end of the day to me it was just kind of a retelling of sir arthur conan doyle's the lost world um so yeah like as a kid it was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna uh you know, rebuild the park and I'm going to reenact those scenes. I think even when I got like lost world toys, I would reenact like scenes where like the, the trailer was like really just like a big monorail or whatever. And then there was like a, like a monorail, like attacks and stuff like that. So it's interesting to, to hear you say like, you know, you're, you're a little bit bummed that they've kind of taken this idea that you had, um, you know, but I don't know. Maybe that maybe that'll be exciting. Maybe it'll be cool. Maybe they'll come up with new ideas that you you hadn't come up with. Oh well, for sure. Yeah, there's going to be so much more that I never thought of. But like, no, I'm not super bummed. I'm just like, it's just like, you know, like because you're like, oh, I kind of I thought about that, and now they're doing it. But it's awesome to see it, you know, realized. You know, I never would have had the capability to do this on my own. I would have made an audio drama that would have half sucked. You know, it wouldn't have been <laughs> anything like this. But this is amazing, and I, I'm I'm glad to see it like coming to light like that so it's kind of like my dream coming true right 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 so all right cool so as we like kind of wrap up um i just want to go through the panel real quick and just get like final thoughts uh final geek out moments things that you're excited for uh brad i'll let you go first on this one all right man dude i'm, I'm flipping through the trailer just right now because there's so so much like i i loved everything and i haven't like gotten the chance to kind of like analyze it too much but um, one of the things here I'm looking at is this uh, little toy set, you know, that's in a destructed like, you know, uh, place on maybe Main Street or something like that. And the the compy in there, it, it just like it's pulled a Jurassic Park three and just like faked me out. I thought it was a toy, but all of a sudden it moved. And you also see like the Hasbro Dilophosaurus and the T Rex right there, which is quite funny that they put their own toys there again. Um, the Brachiosaurus blew my mind, like. That's so awesome. Um, Let's see what else we have here. Uh, The fact that Blue shows up um, on the Explorer that fell from the ravine, you know, all the way up there in the first movie. The fact just like the original poster, man. Yeah, yeah. The Mark Englund poster is coming to life, and I don't know if they knew that was going to happen. If they saved it as an Easter egg for everybody. Obviously, in that poster, the situation is slightly different. You can see them building the park. Um, but in this case, it, it, it's come to light and it's, it's amazing. And I, I'm so excited to see maybe like Chris Pratt come down this ravine, finally answer the fact that how this wrecks, you know, a lot of people still have that question. I can answer it myself. I have, you know, my own theories, but like people are still confused as to how a Rex got across this ravine. It didn't, but that would be funny to actually answer that a little bit, but to see that is amazing. I'm so excited to see that. Um, what else do we have here? Um, Malcolm, to me, is very, very soft-spoken and very different Malcolm. And it seems like he's almost taken a different stance than I would have expected. So that's really interesting to see to see that. You know, I, I, he doesn't seem like he's going to be the Malcolm that we're used to. And then just the, the, the last bit of the trailer, I, uh, I was nearly in tears because just seeing all those dinosaurs, you know, ride off into their deaths is, is very sad. And, 
You know, animals can be dumb sometimes, and they just run, and, and if there's a cliff, maybe they didn't stop in time, and they all fly off, and uh, it's so sad. I, I'm like, I, I really almost teared up, like, watching it, and I bet you in the theater I'm going to be crying at that moment because it's going to be too too sad, too real, because that could happen, you know, to real animals and stuff, and uh, I'm terrified for what's to come with this movie, but, yeah, I'm so excited to see what happens, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. I want to touch on something really quick um, before we go to the rest of the panel. You said this is not the Malcolm we know or the Malcolm we're expecting. Um, I was flipping through Twitter and I saw, you know, Malcolm has a beard and uh, and uh, like gray hair in this uh, this movie. And the next image I saw, because so so he has gray hair and he has a white beard. And the next image I saw was of John Hammond with the white beard and the white hair. Do you think? But, but yet Malcolm is still dressed in all black. Do you feel like Malcolm – like how do you feel like Malcolm is changing? Do you feel like maybe – is he becoming the Hammers now of, of these movies? No. I think, I think he's just resigned to the fact that this is the world that we live in. And instead of fighting it, instead of arguing with it, he he's, seems like he's accepted it. And you know he's like they've been here before us and – if we don't do the right thing, they're going to be here after us, which is kind of chilling, like to hear him say that, like, if we screw this up, you know, we're done, we're gone. The the dinosaurs are better than us. They're going to take over, but we have to do the right thing. I, I think he's on the side of, of, you know, not necessarily destroying these things. That's just a vibe I'm getting, but maybe I'm completely wrong, but that, uh, he just I seems don't know, because if that's his stance, maybe he just says, hey, you know, nature's taking them out again. Let that happen because yeah, they're going to be here after us. Mm-hmm. So we might as well just let it happen. I think I think he's on the I, he's on the side of let these animals die. Yeah, you think? Yeah, I wasn't I sure think- with the whole like we need to be careful I because I wasn't sure to take that as we need to be careful and, and, and you know, capture these things and utilize them in a certain way or – let them die. Be care. I don't know. It was kind of tough I think for me. Be but be careful, not bring them to the mainland. Yeah, well, that, I, that's and I probably think, right. I think Chris. I think you're right. I think it all depends on really the context of where this scene falls into the film as to what he's saying. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an interesting thought. I wasn't thinking of that. Yeah. Uh, Victoria, last last thoughts or, or comments or or extreme excitement uh, notices that you got. I do have a few things. Um, first thing I have is a variety of the dinosaurs. I know we touched on that a little bit. Uh, one thing I've always loved about these films is how each one kind of built a little bit upon the species that they would introduce. Uh, Jurassic Park, you know, it only had a few dinosaurs or a few that were uh, in my mind at the time as a kid. I was like, where's Stegosaurus? You know, where's this dinosaur? Where's that? But then, you know, as the movies went on, they kind of built on them and showed more and more. Um, this just seemed like there were several and uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily a bunch of new ones, but uh, especially near the, the final moments of the trailer, you just see all these dinosaurs uh, you know, just kind of, you know, running for their lives. And um, I felt a, it was maybe a little bit overwhelming to an extent. Uh, it was cool, but I kind of felt like maybe it was a little much. Um, other thoughts, um, I thought it was really cool to see Blue again, um, both as a baby, presumably, and as an adult. Um, I felt like they did show too much in the trailer. I kind of felt like perhaps I would have liked it if they would have gone with something a little more subtle to begin with and maybe done a little bit more of an all-out trailer like this later on. But in light of what the first uh, Jurassic World trailer was like, um, it, that didn't really surprise me. They, they showed a lot in that instance as well. Um, Dr. Malcolm, uh, I'm kind of erring on the side of him kind of being resigned to just letting the dinosaurs go at this point. That was just my interpretation. Uh, I really loved his dialogue, uh, but I did feel that his stance was kind of against, um, you know, saving the dinosaurs, just let nature take its course. Um, the gyrus here falling into the ocean. I thought that was a really cool shot. And uh, that all gave me vibes. And one thing that was, uh, you know, I didn't really expect to see this or hear about it, but um, Isla Sorna is kind of like, where's that going to fall in? If they're, or are they making such a big effort to take these particular dinosaurs off this island if they already have that other island? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that goes back to, you know, they're still animals. You got to rescue them. So. I'm just wondering if that's going to tie in anyway, if they're going to take these dinosaurs to Sorna, if that's their goal, or if they have some other kind of plan for them. Um, so, you know, a lot of interesting things about this trailer for sure. And, and uh, I'm really excited to see where all of these points are going to go. And uh, it definitely has me a lot more excited than I was going into it. Now, you, you touched on an interesting point about, about Sorna. 
are you just to, to clarify? Because I know I know Brad is kind of in the camp that you know. Oh no, they would never write out Sorna. I'm kind of in the camp of. Well, I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, where do, where do you fall? Like as far as like when in Jurassic World, do you still feel like Sorna is out there, or do you feel like that's just been retconned out? Um, you know, I kind of feel like they need to address it somehow or another. It's kind of like with the Star Wars sequel trilogy. There, there hasn't been a whole lot going back so far to the prequel trilogy. It's like that exists. I mean, the episode numbers have not been changed. That's still there. So you kind of gotta ad- address that at some point. So I'm really hoping that. Uh, they're going to address it at some point, whether it's, you know, the plan for them to relocate these dinosaurs to Sorna, or uh, maybe they're going to talk about what happened to that island. Maybe something similar occurred. Uh, who knows? It's anybody's guess at this, at this point, but I really feel like they need to address it somehow or another. Does your opinion on Malcolm, like like the way he's perceived in this trailer, does your opinion change if the Lost World doesn't exist in this franchise anymore? You know, I, I kind of felt like Malcolm in this trailer was a lot more like Jurassic Park Malcolm than the Lost World Malcolm. So if the Lost World suddenly didn't exist, uh, I think there would be a little bit more consistency in his character. But again, I'm just going off a brief moment in the trailer. But I I feel like it's really hard for them. At least for me, it would be really hard for me to imagine that that just doesn't exist anymore. You know, I mean, they had those two movies. Um, So I'd be a little disappointed if they did write them out. Yeah, I'm in that same ballpark. I feel like you know, Jurassic Park three, while it did underwhelm, um, Jurassic Park three was not bad enough that that entire two movies needs to be retconned out of the franchise. So, um, you know, who knows? We'll see. Hopefully we get some answers. Uh, Chris, you got any final thoughts? Well, I'm just going to, uh, jump on that real quick. Uh, yeah, for sure. Retconning those at all. I mean, I know, uh, Colin has said time and time again that they're still part of the franchise and, the fact that they aren't flat out speaking about Sorna, um, I, I don't think that's any indication that, um, you know, as a fan, we have to now accept the fact that that's no longer part of the story or the history of these characters. I think the fact that they're even bringing Malcolm in uh, supports the fact that, you know, the, the, the old movies are still part of this new story and that this isn't just a reboot. Um so, well, I don't think anybody would argue that Jurassic Park doesn't exist, right? Because that's definitely canon well, within the yeah. Jurassic World. The right. big question always is, does – the big question really is because there's so many there's so many inconsistencies with Jurassic Park 3. It's that was Jurassic Park 3 bad enough that you retcon out Isla Sorna altogether? So – you know, to me, like that changes how Malcolm interacts with with our world today because San Diego was a big event. You know, all of a sudden, though, I mean, he's this is a guy who went through the events of the first movie, who was stripped of all of his medals as a scientist and a chaotician, and then you know nobody believed this guy, and then he goes through the events of Lost World, and you know his daughter almost is killed, his girlfriend's almost killed, comes back, he's like, hey, you know, here's my proof that. I am not crazy. I think at this point, he's just so fed up with just everything that's happened and the fact that everyone thought that he was just a crazy lunatic. Um, you know, then he wrote his book. Um, I think at this point, he's just done. And that's why you see him. He's like, oh, am I talking about dinosaurs again? Like, he's just at this point in his life, um, he's just kind of over it. And I think that's the Malcolm we're seeing. We're seeing the, the older, wiser, um, you guys don't understand what you're dealing with kind of Malcolm. And this is the, also the Malcolm. He's also being like, hey, I told you so. Because, yes, Jurassic World worked for X amount of years, but it didn't work. And I think that the fact that people are arguing, hey, we need to save these animals. He's like, you guys are crazy. This has happened once, happened again, happened a third time. This is going to happen again and again and again until it's too late. And I think that's that's the, the stance that he's taken. Um, and I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. Um, that, that's that, that's what I got from the character. I think that's where they're going with. I will say this about him. I wish, I wish, and this is my nitpick. I wish uh, Jeff Goldblum had the look he had in Independence Day: Resurgence. I loved how he he looked in that film. It was like a, I don't know, look, I don't know, more in my mind, more like a Malcolm ish. This he does kind of look a little bit more Hammondy, and with the beard makes him look older than I think he actually is. Right, um, right, for sure. How I wasn't Thor Ragnarok. He looked, you know, like like he was in his forties and thirties. Um, but anyway, um, so what I got from the trailer, um, I, you know, I was really content with everything else they showed this week. Uh, the, the trailer was just the the icing on top of the cake. I know we're gonna get another trailer. Um, 
during Super Bowl, so that's going to be another big eye opener. Um, you know, I, to not sound like a broken record um, with everything that you guys already mentioned, um, some of the questions that I have um, while watching this is what happened. Like, I wonder what happened to the Mosasaur because um, I know that the lagoon was was attached to the ocean. So I'm curious if that scene where they all fall in the ocean, if the Mosasaur is just going to have a field day and if that's going to come into play some way. Um, and yeah, I want, I, I also very curious if, um, somehow, um, animals started breeding in, on the Island as well. Cause I know they were all female, but similar to the first movie, uh, is that something they corrected with these new, uh, this new line of species or have they already, cause it looked like there was more dinosaurs in this movie by numbers than there was in Jurassic world. So I'm curious about that as well. And I'm also curious how many years this, uh, forward this is from the previous so those are the questions that i got from the footage that we saw but i'm very excited all right well then i'll open it up to actually that's a good point like brad victoria do you guys have any questions based on this trailer oh my god uh, brad uh, you go ahead uh i don't know um questions uh i just yeah i guess i kind of want to know exactly where they planned on taking these dinosaurs exactly. Um, maybe that could be how Sorna comes into the mix. Maybe that's where they're going and they're redirected at some point for some reason. Um, I do want to know, I, I really hope they answer and don't just skim over the fact that they built a, a park two times on an island that's volcanic. Like, I feel like there needs to be an answer to that. And whether it's geothermic, you know, <laughs> energy that they, they messed with it a little bit too much and it caused this to stir up a little bit, you know, the, 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 they had the power of the island somehow. So maybe, you know, there has been known or, you know, it's thought that, you know, drilling into the, the earth and stuff like that causes earthquakes and stuff. So maybe something like that happened and caused this volcano to erupt. But I need an answer, I feel like, to that. I feel like I can't, like, just skim through this movie and be like, well, these people were dumb enough to, to make two parks on a dormant volcano. You know, I need something for that at least. So you're you're kind of wondering why John Hammond was so irresponsible as to no, want No, not John families. Hammond. Like he he's a he he didn't know anything. He he, he we've talked about so much like he, that he was delusional. He didn't check with anything. He knew never knew how to build a theme park correctly. So I I can forgive him because he's delusional. But Mizrani and he's got an energy company. He's got all this stuff. He he should have checked. You know, like he should have known. So why was it built a second time, you know, on this island? Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Victoria, do you have any other like questions that you want from this, you know, movie answered? Uh, yeah, kind of similar to Brad. Uh, how does Sorna fit into this? It talks about that a little bit. Uh, are they going to address it? Or are they not? I guess we'll see. Um, how long after Jurassic World is this? Um, just looking at the buildings, that they're pretty decrepit. I kind of feel like this is more than two years after Jurassic World. Um, but then again, this is a, a jungle, tropical island, so stuff grows really quickly. Could be two years afterward. It could be longer. Um, also, how did they, didn't they know that the volcano was still active and was going to destroy the entire island? Just like Brad said, it uh, seems like a pretty important uh, piece of information to overlook. And, uh, you know, maybe something set that off and, you know, they didn't expect it to go off like that. And um, I also want to know, how does this story provide... Uh, for a sequel opportunity, like ultimately what's going to happen. And uh, we'll learn that when we see the movie, of course, but it, it just has me curious, like how is this going to tie into a possible sequel? Well, yeah, because we're in uncharted territory at this point where Jurassic Park was never designed to have a sequel. Um, and then you got Crichton, who was, who was good enough to, to give us the Lost World as a, as, a, as the answer to that. Um, but Jurassic Park 3 was never really it, it doesn't exist anywhere other than in itself and, um, you know, pulled from old scripts and, and maybe comic book references from the from the early 90s. Um, this is the first time that we've we've got someone who has come along and says, yeah, I got an idea for three films. You know, let's let's do it. And I think because Jurassic World was such an um, underdog, like I've said before, I almost feel like fans didn't think we'd ever see this trilogy. And um, you know, who knows if Universal is uh, is a hundred percent backing the third film at this point, no matter how this one does. Um, you know, that remains to be seen. But uh, it's exciting to be able to to know that we have 
a story that's going to wrap up in the next few years that is going to have a, a definitive beginning, middle, and end. So, um, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, uh, just before we go. Sure. Uh, uh, to anybody listening to this and to you guys as well, if you want to get goosebumps, um, watch the behind the scenes stuff or the trailer today and listen to Malcolm's journey. Um, it vibes really well with the footage. And I hope that Giacchino uses a lot of cues from the Lost World and also just a lot of like tribal percussion for this uh, this movie. I'm extremely excited with where the soundtrack could go. And I hope we get a very Lost World inspired soundtrack. You know, I don't think that's completely lost on Giacchino in the sense that, uh, you know, he brought in that little Lost World theme just in case we didn't get, you know, a second movie. Um, he brought that in in Jurassic World. He His first gig was the Lost World video game um, for the PlayStation 1. So I feel like, man, if anybody is prepared to, to do just a killer soundtrack for this film, it's going to be him. So um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, my my thoughts and impressions, um, I'm really excited for uh, the Carnotaur that is the red and the black, like the Kenner stuff. Um, I, you know, I was thanking J.A. Biona and Colin Trevorrow today on Twitter. I was like, oh, PS1 references, thank you. Uh, Kenner style toys, thank you. Mark Eglert posters, thank you. So um, I, I even put the one with like with Ian Malcolm, because I've said on the podcast a bunch of times, I want an Ian Malcolm like testimony or something like in, in a in a courtroom, like talking about his experience, you know, kind of like a redemption scene for him. Uh, yeah, because in the Lost World, he was, you know, he was being mocked at the beginning of that film. And, uh, you know, I, I even put the picture of him up there and I was like, you know, I was like, you know what, Colin and J.A., I'll, like, I'll take this as like a personal request answered. Like, thank you so much for that. So um, I'm excited for things they've shown in this trailer. I hope everyone out there is as well. Uh, you know, listeners, there's going to be more content coming out, um, more things to cover over the next uh, six months. We are still six months out from this film. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I know the panel is excited. And, uh, you know, please interact with us over on Twitter at uh, Jurassic Park Podcast. And, uh, you know, we, we hope that uh, you'll tell your friends about us and we'll get more listeners and a bigger audience. And uh, we're all really excited. So feel free to, uh, you know, contact any of us. Um, Brad, where can people find you? Um, well, like you said, I'm at Jurassic Park Pod on Twitter or at Brad Jost on Twitter. Uh, head to JurassicParkPodcast.com. You can find all our links. We're on iTunes, everywhere. Download the podcast. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Very cool. Victoria, where can people find you? I'm most active on Instagram, Victoria's Cantina. You can find me on Twitter at Vix Cantina, Victoria's Cantina on Facebook, and of course on YouTube. All right, and last but not least, Chris, where can people find you? Hey, um, you can predominantly find me on YouTube and my YouTube channel, Chris Cross Media, C-H-R-E-S, Cross Media, and on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm just kind of everywhere. And it's, it's, it's too many social medias these days, but yeah. Fair just- enough. Uh, you guys can all find me at Aaron D. Byer uh, on Twitter. I'm usually just... Uh, tweeting about Jurassic Park because it's pretty much the only thing I care about uh, anymore these days Uh, but uh, yeah you know get a hold of me uh, let me know your thoughts let everyone else know your thoughts and uh, we hope to uh, have you back at the podcast and uh, guys it was great talking to you Uh, I think this was like definitely a fun different way of of handling the podcast and I I hope you guys enjoyed being on today that was great thanks for having me most definitely thanks for having us on here yeah thanks for having me Eric yeah, Brad, it's always <laughs> nice to have you on the Jurassic Park podcast. So, I know, it's great uh, to with, be here. All right, well, with that, I'm signing out, and uh, you guys have a good night. Are you hearing this? Make sure to visit JurassicParkPodcast.com to find all our past episodes, brand new news articles, information on how to contact us, and much more. It's a great source for everything related to the podcast and, of course, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Head to JurassicParkPodcast.com and help us build a great community. Anybody hear that? Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.